You're listening to Speaking of Supply Chain, a Mibach podcast. This is a show for logistics professionals looking to learn more about the latest innovations in supply chain. Each episode will feature a conversation on topics such as mitigating supply chain disruption and reducing risk, current automation trends, sustainability initiatives, and more. Let's dive right in. Hello, and welcome to Speaking of Supply Chain, where we explore trends, current events, and innovations impacting the logistics and supply chain industries. I'm your host, Ellen Wood. Today, we're excited to be joined by Alex Waterings, Senior Principal with Meatbot Consulting, who's going to share some of his insights on the Fresh Connection and how it's being used by companies, as well as how consultants are using this to support their clients. Alex, welcome. So glad you're here with us today. How long have you been in the supply chain industry? Hi, Ellen. Um, Thanks for having me. Uh, I've been working in the supply chain as a consultant for the last 15 years. And uh, I joined Meebach roughly six years ago whereby internally at Mibach, I'm now responsible for everything which has to do with supply chain planning. And you can consider me a little bit of a one-trick pony in that respect. So glad to be here. (laughs) It's great to have you. We're also joined by Hans Kramer, who is the co-founder and director of InChange. And you're going to tell us a little bit today about a gamified training tool for supply chain managers called the Fresh Connection. Thank you so much for joining us, Hans. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, then, well, thank you for, for having me as well, of course, Alan. Um, uh, yeah, I've, um, I've always been fascinated with how, with how things were made. Already as a kid, I could be glued to a television screen looking at small movie clips about how things were made. So that I've gone into supply chain and operations was actually quite logical. Uh, I started in, in operational roles, departmental uh, roles later on. And at some point, I started training in supply chain as well. And nowadays, I'm so happy to be... Um, be one of the co-founders and owners of, uh, of InChange, and, and we market and develop business simulations to learn more about supply chains and value chains. Awesome. So before we get into learning more about the Fresh Connection, we're going to do something a little bit to get our audience familiar, um, you know, introduce us a little bit more to them. So the, the question we've been using recently is, if you could travel anywhere in the world tomorrow, where would you go and what would you do there? Hans, you can start. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would probably go to uh, to to uh, uh, an Italian province called Umbria, where there's a, mm. a, a town there, small scale town uh, called Gubbio, uh, which has already been there since before the Romans, and it's a place we simply fell in love with 15 years ago. Never imagined I would go back every <laughs> summer to the same. Every destiny. summer. And this year we didn't. This year we didn't, by the way, and we ah. truly miss it. So I would not think, I think long from before <laughs> I, uh, I would get on a, in a car or on a plane to go there. Beautiful. What about you, Alex? Yeah. Well, you may have heard from my last name that originally by birth I come from Belgium, but now I'm uh, working and living over the six years in Germany. So I really like to visit my hometown again yeah. in Flanders, oh. pick up the bike, ah. and just go on a ride uh, with <laughs> some friends. That does sound nice. So I would probably pick somewhere tropical right about now. I haven't been on a vacation since before COVID started. And uh, yeah, mm. I, I could really use some some white sand beaches and palm trees. It doesn't particularly matter where, just somewhere on a beach where I can sit and relax and my kids can play in the water. <laughs> that sounds lovely. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to our topic today, which is the fresh connection. So I know that, you know, companies are experiencing lots of change when it comes to their supply chain. They need to be able to, you know, turn on a dime and react to situations very, very quickly as things are changing and between COVID and everything else that's happening in the world today, supply chains have to react very quickly. So I know that um, the Fresh Connection is a way to train supply chain professionals. Hans, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, it's actually um, it's a bit of a tagline we used in the beginning. Is it's it's about creating alignment, and alignment is is often quite often missing in, in companies. It's it's quite a simple concept. You're all together in one boat, and you want to row into the same direction, but it seems to be hard in practice and 
having been a supply chain practitioner myself for many, many years, it was sometimes even a bit frustrating that my colleagues did not always understand that supply chain outcomes and success depend on practically all the people in the company and, and, and on lots of functional mm -hmm. departments. Um, and it's all about collaboration, communication, which is not rocket science. If you tell people they understand, but yeah, giving them giving them an experience in these matters and, and to sort of let them let them experience what it is, how everything is connected mm -hmm. in supply chains and value chains. And if you make a change here, what changes over there? To connect those dots, yeah. Therefore, uh, uh, simulations, business simulations are are uh, are very useful. That's what we learned. Okay. So, what made you start this company? You're one of the co-founders. Um, what what brought about yeah. this this idea? Yeah. So, actually, the original idea is is from 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 my co-founder Ege Haag. Um, actually, uh, he already had this idea in the, in the beginning of the 2000s. Uh, because he had the same experience as, as, as me, we found out later, that he was running a planning department at the time in a pharma company. And he found out that people were fighting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and we're having conflicts and, and we're, we're, having, we're having all kinds of, yeah. of, uh, of rush meetings and, and issues that they needed to solve. So uh, he founded a consultancy and, and around those years. Um, and at some point, they came to the conclusion that having games to explain about supply chain concepts was very useful. At some point, around 2008, they decided to, to develop an internet-based game since they simply wanted to make sure that everybody on the face of the earth <laughs> could, could access such a game as long as they had internet mm -hmm. access. Um, and, and, and around those days, I was already uh, being a, a, a trainer for, for supply chain management, but, but old school, uh, PowerPoint slides, in the beginning even overhead slides, yes. uh, monologue, uh, not very interactive. So I got to know him. I heard what they were doing. They were developing this first release of, a, of an interactive simulation, also team-based, people working together mm -hmm. as teams, managing virtual companies from a supply chain perspective. Uh, I simply fell in love with the concept. And, uh, and we, we, we got along fine professionally as well as privately. And, and so in 2010, InChange was born and we were heading off on a, on a yeah international uh, international journey of, of bringing this uh, bringing this supply chain uh, game to the world and uh, simulation to the world so who is this game it's it's a tool but who is this game designed yeah. for um it's um it's middle name i sometimes say is versatile because it can be very easily uh Varied in terms of complexity, how you set it up, just like a consumer game, you could always, you could almost say it, it has levels, as we call it, levels of complexity mm -hmm. that we can spread across training. Um, you can you can play condensed, short and sweet versions with it, but you can also inject a lot of content in it if that if that is called for. Um, and and so yeah, that game is then the the fresh connection, a fruit juice company that you. Uh, that you uh, that you run as a management team of four, where already students at bachelor level can come to terms with what it is like to be in a company, to have a role there, and to work together, all the way up to even sometimes the boardroom. That doesn't happen so mm -hmm. often, but sometimes also the boardroom of companies really would like to experience what it's like because they often get their own people involved and they want to evaluate them themselves. And so we work as students with professionals. Um, alike, actually, from, from small scale to large scale companies at the same time. And perhaps okay. I can Are add any... to that, uh, Hans. Sure. Um, in one of my yeah. other roles, I also am a visiting or a lecturing professor at the Frankfurt University of Applied Sciences, where also the Fresh Connection is being played by students. And I always get very positive feedback from these students because it's for them uh, an exposure or an opportunity to engage in a company on a level whereby as a just job student, they would not be exposed to, or as someone who is at an entry level, they would not be exposed to the type of decisions that have to be taken. And therefore, uh, it's already a preemptively exposure that they would get to the kind of meetings where they might grow into over time. 
So this is definitely one of the key benefits I see also for students that they understand also a little bit better how a company is actually not just the sum of individuals taking individual decisions, but a collective that has to come in a collaborative mm-hmm. setting. Uh, yeah. and, and perhaps as a second topic, also as a practitioner, how we have been using the first connection as a consultant. Uh, this is on two levels. First of all, internally, uh, for the trainings that we give to our junior consultants. Secondly, also as a change and communication tool within projects to bring our customers on a new level of understanding, a new level of engagement with various type of processes, planning being one of the most explicit. Interesting. So is is there a particular industry that benefits from this? Is it universal in terms of how it can help communication and, and understanding across business units? Or um, Yeah, go ahead, Alex. I, I hear you. Uh... I, th- I think from the way in which the game is being designed, uh, the most natural fit would be for any kind of FMCG company. Because as Hans was explaining, the Fresh Connection is based upon a fruit juice company. And mm-hmm. within a fruit juice company, there is from the industrial footprint, in the first instance, you need to buy various types of fruit pulp and you need to produce a blend, which in a second production phase needs to be packaged into various types of uh, different units. Whereby from a planning point of view, this is really like the Champions League for anyone from a European uh, audience will understand this is like the king's discipline uh, of planning, whereby you integrate Mm -hmm. various types of planning, which is process oriented and batch oriented. So from a natural fit Mm -hmm. from an industry, definitely fast moving consumer goods, going close to pharma, going close to a chemistry. But it needs; it does not need to be restricted to that because, uh, as, as what Hans and the team had been doing, there are sufficient elements that also make it applicable for broader types of industries. And Hans, Hans if I'm not mistaken, I think you even play this in military settings and even much more beyond that. Isn't yeah. That? Wow. Yeah, that's true. So, so we we, we try to um, we think that running supply chains and, and and running them successfully has a lot of generic content. Uh, so we, we quite often start our trainings with, with the, the need for strategy, or we simply let people sort of experience first what it has to have no strategy. If they become the so-called <laughs> virtual management team of, our, of, of, the, of the Fresh Connection, then the first couple of iterations that they, that they go through uh, sometimes are disastrous, which is fine because it's a safe environment. Uh, you, you, you fail it's and true. you learn from, from how you fail, which, which is totally fine. And then we, we quite often say, shouldn't we think a bit strategically first here? Which yeah. is very generic. Yeah. Yeah? So you need strategy anywhere. And, and, and especially you need to make strategy work. That's perhaps even the harder part. Setting up a strategy, you can even provide people with a strategy. It's not about hours and hours of strategy development that we tire people with. But making a strategy work, putting it to work at, at, at tactical level, at departmental level. What does this strategy mean for me and my department and, 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 and the co-workers, my co-workers? That's perhaps the hardest part. And that's also very generic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, realizing that you have to deal with trade-offs. You cannot be the best at everything at the same time, all the time. Uh, again, very generic. So like, like Alex just said, uh, Air, For- Air Force uh, Institute of Technology, it's, that's an educational institution. Um, they work with us uh, for, from that angle, uh, but also uh, engineer to order companies or make to order companies like, for instance, uh, heavy, heavy equipment manufacturers like, like Caterpillar or those kind of names. They, they also work with us because they find these generic, generic elements uh, in there. And, uh, and, and it especially helps when if you run a facilitation like that, if you find your, your so-called partners in crime at the client, because they can make that connection so strongly to their business. So that's what we, <laughs> from a facilitation point, also always look for, to make that connection from a fruit use company to their company and to the context that their people have to deal with uh, every day. One of, one of the things, uh, Alan, I think we have to um, take a look at is sure. on the one hand, there should be a recognizable aspect to it. So this game will be played by people who are somewhat familiar with a supply chain. Uh, It Mm, will be unlikely that this game is going to be played by the legal counsel of any kind of a company. Um, on, On the other hand, there should not also be a perfect match with the current entity. 
because uh, one of the things that we all, uh, very often recommend is that a person who is really vested within sales would now take on the role of the financial controller of the fresh connection company and the other way around so that you can actually put yourself in the shoes of someone else mm -hmm. and one of the mm -hmm. key learning aspects and this is extremely difficult to teach it in an academic setting to to build a powerpoint slide about it or to try to instill it through any kind of other way except through an experience that you take these people through and this is the following the fact that on the one hand you could as a company take individual decisions and project your figures individually whereby you believe that you have your figures made either from a financial plan or from a supply chain plan, a marketing plan. But then to say that we as a group collectively own these figures and the way in which you come to those, this is what you have to experience. And therefore, the Fresh Connection is a very easy entry and it's a safe environment. And the first time, as Hans said, well, it's it's played over a number of periods. This is perhaps also something that we need to uh, yeah. to exemplify. In the first period that you play it, you simply struggle mm -hmm. because you're not exposed to this kind of behavior in the past. You do not have the natural um, behavioral aspects that, that that would help you through it. And therefore, this is really a skill you have to learn. It's a new muscle you have to flex. And it should not be underestimated that the interpersonal connection with your team members is so incredibly important. Hans, I think uh, you definitely can can also add something to that. Yeah, as I said, when I, I, I also do a lot of training delivery myself, I truly enjoy uh, the interaction. And nowadays we can also go face back to face to face yeah. sometimes. So that's, that really makes it uh, more enjoyable, I would say. Um, and, and I go in front of audiences <laughs> of, of, of large scale companies. And then I say, I, today I brought with me a company, it, it only sources five components. It only has three customers, retail customers. We're in the fruit juice mm -hmm. business, so we, saw, we, we serve retailers. It only sells six products, so it should be a breeze for you to do this. And then, and then, they, then they find out that uh, like, like <laughs> just said, they have to come to terms with running the company with four people. Uh, so they have to work together and manage things as a team and find out how everything is interconnected. And um it's it's not that it feels sometimes like like a first day on a new job and that's what i also sort of manage their expectation or i even throw in a disclaimer beware it's like drinking from a fire hose in the beginning because it's all new to them so also if i tell them where they can find all of the information <laughs> that they need to run a company we've made sure that our simulation is not heavy on textbooks and manuals or nothing everything can be found in there but where is it so but if you're a team of four, then you can work with four. And then your teammates become enormously important by telling you where you can find certain details or data or information. Or You need to share. Uh, so you bring, you bring to the forefront again that, that people need to communicate, need to collaborate. And then as four, they're much stronger than, than each other. Else. So in this experiential learning, in this you know, communication uh, is what it sounds like, a, a big communication exercise. Can I, can what I, are I some of the other learning some, objectives? Yeah. What are they Very trying to accomplish and I, 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 I know it will be a little bit game. cringy. Um, so you're, you're warned up front. You, you, you certainly know the, the, the saying, the soft part oh. is the hard part. And <laughs> this is what it all boils down to. Uh, you can have a second saying, once again, pretty cringy. You can Ooh, get the yes. paralysis by analysis that you just overanalyze everything. And this is also, okay, and I will try to explain. Uh, in a first period, you get exposed to a mm -hmm. whole lot of information that is there in a condensed setting and you know where to click left and right. And you find all kind of reports and analysis that uh, in any kind of real company is also the data this is at your finger, uh, this is... Uh, at, at your disposal at uh, at the click of your fingers. I will repeat the sentence. So the second thing is uh, paralysis by analysis. Oh, I'm going to repeat again. <laughs> the second thing is um, paralysis by analysis, which Ooh. means that you simply yeah, have I... an overload of data and that you simply spend too much time in analyzing all the information in the beginning. Because, once again, in this first period, you get a lot of data. 
which you also have in your day-to-day -day business. You have all this available at a few clicks left and right. But if you spend too much time on this on your own, within your own silo, then you do not know what is relevant from this set of data for anyone else. And if you then do not have an alignment whereby you believe that you go left, but the others go right, a simple example, you would want to optimize your sourcing, but someone else goes for a premium quality on, on, on another site, which sounds so incredibly trivial that you say, well, hold on a second, you would never make any kind of mistake against these kind of trivial decisions. To the contrary, because you have a certain time constraint whereby you need to submit your decisions. And if you're simply not aligned on any of these once again, pretty basic principles, then you will get a hit. And this is what you suffer through in the first few periods. Yeah, yeah, I can certainly relate to that. And, and, and coming back to learning goals, to me, that's always the most important questions when talking to clients. Uh, what, what do people need to take, uh, take out of this? What, what should they take away? So the generic things that I, that, I, that I spoke about, strategy and making sure that you make strategy work, alignment uh, and trade-offs, th those are always on the table. But what, what a lot of people, a lot of companies give back to me is, uh, Alex just mentioned silos. Uh, lots of people work in their functional silos and they want to they wanna break down those silos. They want to make sure that people get together on, on a joint game plan mm -hmm. that they have agreed on. So that's extremely uh, that's extremely important. Um, but there's also, of course, if you look at if you look at supply chains nowadays, what are we what are we discussing a lot? Resilience. Eh? We, we we've been confronted with not being resilient enough. So we have content on resilience. If that is a learning goal, um, true. We have content on on sales and operations <laughs> planning, which is in my my belief uh, an evergreen topic, sure. and very focused on on on, on supply chain collaboration. Um, we have carbon footprint mm -hmm. as, a, as an enormously important topic, or we have constraints in our supply chains. Those are all those are those are all parts of our library of content that we can deliver. Uh, we do not deliver them to showcase them. We deliver them if that is called for by the learning goals of our, of our corporate clients. So that's also a, a very serious discussion, and sometimes even mm -hmm. a bit of a challenging discussion towards corporate clients, because you need to have that very clear. Perhaps I can give a practical example on, on, on this last topic, uh, because indeed, other, otherwise it may sound as if the Fresh Connection is just um, a more fancy of version course. of the beer game. And I would assume all the, uh, all the listeners here are familiar with the beer game, but it's much more than that. Uh, we recently had a case whereby um, a customer wanted to go towards collectively owned or group targets. And then key thing is that if you come from a paradigm whereby every single individual department, either it being sales, supply chain, procurement, is responsible for certain KPIs, then this will trigger a certain behavior whereby every single one will optimize themselves. And once again, here we are in this silo thinking. In order to migrate towards team targets or group targets, this is really also a fundamental psychological change, which needs to be practiced in a safe environment, because you cannot take people immediately live towards this new way of working. And therefore, the Fresh mm -hmm. Connection definitely had been used as this safe haven, whereby you have a sandbox environment where you can test this out. So. Once again, even to give an example within this example, who is responsible for forecast accuracy? Mm -hmm. And now I can hear everyone immediately say, well, that should be sales. Yes, in most instances, that will be sales, except in those cases, certainly in the recent supply chain context, whereby there is a supply chain shortage, whereby there is somehow along the supply chain a disruption, whereby sales said, well, I was able to predict everything correctly. Mm -hmm. You were simply not able to supply. My forecast accuracy would have been perfect. However, there was simply a kink along the chain. So, hey, I'm throwing my hands in the air. You shouldn't blame me. In, indeed, you have then locally optimized uh, this focus accuracy measurement whereby you take out certain effects. But if you really want to come to the collective target of the entire company, you mm -hmm. should not make these excuses. You should, as a group, try to make the best of all assumptions in order to make sure that you have the best prediction, including not only the variability on the demand pattern, but also the disruptions that you may have on your supply side. 
Therefore, making a long story short, forecast accuracy, mm -hmm. who is responsible for that? In the end, it may be the complete group or the collection of managers who go along the entire supply chain. And for this paradigm shift, in order to facilitate that, the Fresh Connection is a good tool to bring them along the journey. Yeah. Yeah, you, and you also trigger me, Alex, in that sense. Because it, at the end of the day, what you want to have as a training outcome, I think, is change behavior. Right. You want to have impact with your training. Uh, so so right. if people have, um, if people give me a compliment after the training that they've had a nice training, of course, I'm happy to hear that, but I'd like to hear more. And, and not, not the, right after that, but uh, a couple of months or perhaps even years after that, that you that you uh, can come back to that and say behavior really changed and how do we connect the, the learning outcomes to to how we run our business because then at the end of the day you, you create impact and then the money you've spent on training was money well spent so um and then that's that's what you should be looking for like, just like alex said that that takes uh, to take people from that from that from from one day to another in a, in a very big change going through such an experiential learning session could really uh, give you a lot of aha moments and open your eyes and say, hey, this really works or this doesn't work. And now how do we apply this <laughs> back home uh, and make sure that we have that impact? That's, um, yeah. That's sometimes even what you have to challenge corporate clients about if you speak with them about their learning goals. That you need to push them a little bit and say, hey, this is, at the end of the day, this is what we should be after. Are we after the right things? So I know that I've obviously played the beer game before, and I know in, in the training where I did it, we only had time okay. for the one round of the beer games where we were allowed to fail completely. And so you've mentioned that there's usually a, a first round of your game where, again, you let them do things the way they would normally do them and let them fail completely. But how does the yeah. rest of the game work? How, how does it Constantly progress throughout the training? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so what we what we make very sure of is um, that when people go through a number of these so-called rounds, typically we say let's do at least three. So the, the outcome of the first is not a hit and miss. Uh, that, they fail, but some some teams also do really well. But is that then based on sheer luck, or is that based on on on, on true experience or understanding at all? So we make very sure that besides that mm -hmm. that that people play so-called rounds with our simulations, that we debrief them properly. Um, uh, so we make time to debrief them. Whether we do this uh, on site, we, we create time for that in the day, of course, in the daily schedule. Whether we do this online, then quite often they play during a couple of weeks, a uh, couple of days through the week, uh, and we reconvene webinar style, and then we uh, then we debrief properly with them. And we actually start asking them instead of us instead of us finding out what they've done. What have you done, and why? Especially why did you do that? And what was the expected outcomes to to mm -hmm. Because decisions are easily taken, but what are underlying assumptions? And do you bother to later on, if mm -hmm. you go into your next round, to properly, because before, if they go into the next round, they can look back on how the round, the previous round went, and they have all kinds of reports. So they can evaluate. And that's, that's what we often push them in a positive sense to do. Check your assumptions. Were, were these assumptions correct? And what decisions uh, that you made based on them were good decisions that you can cling on to? What were mediocre decisions that you would like to at least review? And what were bad ones uh, that you shouldn't do again, eh? that, you should, that you should correct? And, 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 and the, more, the more of these rounds and iterations that you go through, the better people get at that process. And then you can also in introduce more complexity. So you can take them on a very steep learning curve Mm -hmm. Sometimes I even, uh, if, I, if I run uh, lengthy sessions with them of, of five or six rounds, I sometimes uh, show them what they, what they started with in round number one, where they were really from the beginning, whoa, this is a lot. And then I show them what they have already gotten to in round number five or six. And that, that's a very big step. And, it's, and then it's even easier than the beginning because they've come to terms with, with what they needed to do. And they've learned so much along the way in only, if it's face-to-face -face two days or five to six rounds online. So um, I would like to mm -hmm. add something to that, Alan, when you say when you played over multiple rounds. So it also like if you play the beer game one round, then you mm -hmm. simply break down the entire game and you start from scratch and you for a second game. 
here the game continues. So it's the decisions that you took in the first period mm -hmm. will be inherited over to the second period. And so it goes on. Yeah. So this is also something fundamentally yeah. different. Ah, okay. Moreover, mm -hmm. you start with a company um, that is on the edge of bankruptcy. So the, your first focus is on sheer survival. Um, and therefore, mm -hmm. also from a maturity point of view, you need to simply get <laughs> the shop running and open. And you try to survive these first two periods. Once you progress for the third, fourth, and, and, and other periods, you also want to, once again, gain profitability, gain market share, and, and, and so on. So your maturity level also increases. And this is, I think, the, the real cool concept where Hans is most likely a little bit too, um, how would you say this in English, um, To bescheiden, how do you say this, Hans? Modest, yeah. <laughs> Modest. Okay. <laughs> Am I modest? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will start the sentence again. So, Ellen, one of the things is you play this over a number of periods, whereby you start in period one at the edge of bankruptcy, and then you have to progress over multiple periods so that you, once you survive till period three, you then also grow into more profitability. And here, one of the things whereby I I think Hans is a little bit too modest about the, about the, the fresh connection, is, is the following thing. You progress through multiple levels of maturity, and um, it is the type of decisions that you take, whereby in a first instance, it is simply reaction that you have. You react on all the inputs that you that, that, that you take, and as a co mm -hmm. collection of your, your, your four players, you have to try to survive. But once you progressed through period three, four, five, and following, the level of depth of the reports that you have and that you can take into account, the type of discussions that you then have within the group that you have, also, if you look at on a maturity scale, this really goes up pretty steep, pretty quickly, even to the point that by period three and four, in many cases within mm -hmm. the game, you go completely beyond what most companies have already in their day-to-day -day operations. So by the time you achieve period four or five, mm -hmm. you see people making aspirational statements in the sense that mm -hmm. wouldn't it be great that we have this kind of reporting also in our day-to-day -day operations? Hey, this is like a cool way of looking at things. Why don't we have this? And then you see all of a sudden they take their IT guys with them and then they take mm -hmm. everything. Can't we construct something which is similar? And then they try to emulate <laughs> the game as, an ins as a source of inspiration, and they simply transpose it to their day-to-day -day practice, to the real life. And this is something for which you I'm always astounded by seeing this, by the swiftness in which this happens, by saying, hey, this is a cool idea. Why didn't we think about it? And by doing that, I believe, Hans, this is one of the points where you're a little bit too modest. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you uh, for saying that. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned something interesting. You said it's a team of four players that's playing this round. So, what happens when this is a, a larger group or a larger training for a company where there's, you know, yeah. 30, 40 individuals yeah, they, participating in this yeah, training? Exactly. Are they competing against each yeah, other? Yeah, uh, we make who multiples wins? of four. Oh my and, uh, and if need be, yeah, we can we can also have a team of three. You could even have a team of one, but it's meant for four people because there's four functional roles to be manned. Okay. Um, and but uh, so we create uh, multiples of four, and then we create. Yeah, I, I, I always say if a company tell, asks me how many people should at minimum play, they say, well, if we could at least have eight people, so we could create two teams. Automatically, we will have competition. We can drive. Mm -hmm. We can drive energy. Uh, people would like to do how they're doing. You benchmark them. Uh, we even go as far as uh, as having having annual tournaments with this simulation, where we benchmark globally. And big names, big company names, um, and not only big names, of course, also also small and <laughs> mid-sized enterprises uh, participate. But you can really compare yourself and benchmark yourself against uh, how how other professionals are, are are doing this. But within within in company training, yeah, we have multiple teams in the room, and 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 that that gives a nice dynamic because when I when I then ask people after rounds, okay, tell me what you did, they go like, no, 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 I'm not going to share that <laughs> because then because then my colleagues know, and then. And, and there's, <laughs> Yeah, so they don't want to. Yeah, that my competitors know. Right, so that's uh, that, that and, and and that also makes it uh, for me as a facilitator an enormous fun-filled experience because it's very nice to 
to to be able to to train uh, with people like that because it really becomes a, a really interactive interactive uh, thing for everybody also for me so that's great well and that adds another level of reality to the situation is that's what supply chains are doing they are trying to keep their competition from yeah. figuring out what they've got right they are competing against other supply yeah. chains that are having similar issues and I, th I think that's just a, a great way to run the trainings that that feels so, so real. I mean, it's a simulation, of course, but like you've said this whole time, everything is very realistic. It's very applicable. Yeah, even you, the way you, you that literally the draw played. people in. It's really immersive. And I, I had this two weeks ago. I was training in Poland. There was there was my second face to face session uh, this year. So I was I was out in Poland with a with a big uh, U.S. based uh, automotive uh, supplier and. Um, I had kicked off the session um, and then the room went silent because people were really into what they had. Yeah, they had to they had to do reconnaissance in their own role. So they were in pots of four. They were sitting together and they became silent. They were really concentrated. And after 15 or 20 minutes, there was buzz growing because then they had read a lot of stuff. They had had made themselves familiar with what they had to do. And they started discussing it. And I did totally nothing. They were so involved in what they were doing. And I, that's what I also told. That was a committee sitting there that, that run the whole, the whole program with them for three days. I was part of that program. I said, yeah, just see what, what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, it's almost self-propelling. I need to sort of shake them up. And, and, and they will be like, like, like I used to be as a kid when I told my parents when I had to come to dinner, let me f finish the chapter first. Because you are so drawn into it. And that's, <laughs> um, yeah, that, that happened. Well, Alan, by the end of the year, uh, also internally at Mibach, we use this as one of our trainings. Um, the Fresh Connection will once again be played. And I already get a lot of mm -hmm. eager anticipation on who will be in which team and will it be per office or will it be per department and who's going to play against who and what were the stats last time <laughs> and who should take revenge this time. Um, so there is even already anticipation before it even gets started. <laughs> Revenge. That's interesting that there there's already a buzz about a training. Like most people don't get excited. They're like that is true. A training to go to. Yeah, and, and, and we're also sometimes this is quite again. the opposite. So people that don't know <laughs> us or don't know what it's about, then then that's that's even the feeling that I have to sort of overcome when I when I kick off. And, and, but it, it, it very quickly always mm -hmm. disappears. And, uh, I'm sure it's a pleasant surprise to say, oh, we're going to have a, a competitive game, online game that we're going to do. Yeah. That we're yeah, going to figure out how you, to, uh, how to turn this company all, around. From, from various areas <laughs> from the globe, they have, they are, they're jet lagged. They get together for three to five days. They, if you're not careful, you, you, you're totally overwhelmed and with too many mm -hmm. PowerPoint presentations. If you weave in a couple of these sessions, you really create a nice cadence of interactivity. So it also, it, it really helps. Uh, the total program, uh, I would, I would even claim. So uh, yeah, it works. Like uh, perhaps this is a good point to highlight a few of, I would say, the conditions in which the game can be played optimally. Um, I will first say how we try to use the game sure. in a professional setting as a consultant. Uh, first, first of all, um, as Mibach, we want to be a delivery boy and not just a messenger boy which means that if we want to implement a new process, it's not just a mm -hmm. PowerPoint that we deliver where we say, hey guys, this is how it should look like. And now you go off and try to implement all of that. So therefore we want to take yeah. them through an experience mm -hmm. holder. However, it's within a project, not always feasible to do that. Uh, because if on a project, people are already overloaded with project work, whereby the day-to-day -day business is still going on at the background, the backfilling of those positions has not been 100% guaranteed as had been initially mm -hmm. promised at the start of the project. Then a training on top of all of that can be just this little drop too much in the ocean. So therefore, yeah. if you yeah. do not have the mental bandwidth or the capacity to devote yourself to that training, people will disconnect. So it needs to be a safe haven in which you can experiment. And if the conditions are not given to do that, then I think the um, and, and any kind of experiential learning game, not necessarily Fresh Connection, but any of these uh, should be put on the second rank of priority. 
However, if you are able to satisfy all of these conditions that you have sufficient time, you can dedicate um, all your, as I said, uh, mental capacity and bandwidth to it, then it definitely is a very great experience. Yeah, and, and there and their versatility also factors in again because, no, uh, like that. I said, yeah. it's uh, this, our simulations they sit in the cloud. Yeah. So if you have an internet-enabled device, you can always access them. That means we were already we could do we we've been doing remote deliveries mm -hmm. since since the day we we existed. So uh, and when, when Corona hit us, we were especially well capable of doing that. But that makes sure that you can we can easily spread out a program in time if that needs to if that needs to happen. We can spread it also if we do face to face. We can be sprinkled across a number of days quite easily. Uh, we can we can make it a hybrid approach where people start online mm -hmm. for a couple of so-called rounds and then we finish it during a get together or we do it the other way around. So those are ways of of like 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 Alex has said that you don't become uh, the proverbial drop in the ocean or the the, the the drop that you don't want to be. So um, so we try to 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 accommodate that with uh, with what companies are asking for. And that also, at the end of the day, uh, you, you have a much better chance of a successful training session. Yeah, that helps. Fantastic. So is there anything else about the Fresh Connection and, and this amazing training program that you'd like to share with our listeners? Is there, is there a way that they can test this? Is, how do they get in touch with you? I mean, I'm excited about it. I kind of want to sign up for the training later this year and jump in on one of those teams, but I'm not well, sure. Well, it might be I a way of it. We, we, make, we make sure that people can also adequately train beforehand. So <laughs> you, might, you might qualify that way. So who knows? Um, yeah, we have, of course, uh, we have a website where people can go to. Uh, that, that's, that's our InChange website. So it's very easy to, uh, to Google us. And InChange, by the way, is spelled with AI. From supply chain in change <laughs> to make that very clear dutch people dutch people messing around with the english language and coming mm -hmm. up with a good name <laughs> i would say yeah it happens but um but yes it's very easy one of the first things that you see on screen to ask for for a trial for for any of the simulations that we deliver um uh, and and we of course get notified of that so mm -hmm. it's very easy for us if, if people don't reach out to us we we will we, we'll reach out to them as well that's that's how uh how assertive we are uh, as well. So it would be uh, that it's quite easy to find us and to get in touch with us or to, to do a <laughs> trial on your own to experience what it is like. And we will be very happy to uh, to go through those trials with, mm -hmm. with people together as well. We quite often do. Uh, and to do Q&A at the same time, find out our learning goals, all the things that we need to know to uh, to be able to deliver a successful uh, session. To and also from our side, uh, Alan, we at Mibach, we have a number of certified trainers. So this okay. is that what and we do, usually within the scope of projects that we use the Fresh Connection as a part of the entire consultancy delivery. That brings us to the end of our episode. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for joining me to talk about the Fresh Connection and introducing in change to our listeners. Um, this sounds like an amazing opportunity in all of these challenging for so many companies that are struggling uh, to keep the lines of communications open, to keep their supply chains competitive time. So it was really great to hear more about this, this particular solution. I think it's a fantastic training tool and I am so excited that you were able to join us today. Thanks for listening to Speaking of Supply Chain. Be sure to rate us five stars on your podcast app, whether it's Spotify, Apple, iTunes, or Google Play. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. Mibach Consulting is one of the largest and most globally recognized supply chain consulting, engineering, and advisory firms. For nearly 50 years, we've helped clients achieve supply chain excellence and sustainable competitive advantage across the entire spectrum of the supply chain by delivering improvements and innovation strategically, tactically, and digitally. To learn more, visit Mibach.com. You've been listening to Speaking of Supply Chain, a Mibach podcast. Keep connected with us by subscribing to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you like what you've heard, please rate the show. That helps us to keep delivering the latest in supply chain information. Thanks for listening. Until next time.